Hello, everybody. Um, Andrea Majewski here with Dental L. Um, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the things that we might be able to get back from the government. Now, this is specific to Canada, and I need to say I'm not an accountant. I don't work for this, the CRA. I am no expert by any means. Um, I'm just simply telling you guys what I've been doing, what I've been looking into. And as I said, things that I've been looking into that might be able to help somebody who's in the position, um, in the position such as myself, where I don't qualify for unemployment because I work for myself. So if you are an independent dental hygiene owner, um, you, in some cases, haven't qualified for unemployment. Um, if you pay into it, then you would, as far as I understand, but that's not something that I have done because um, I do have I tutor as well. So I would never qualify for unemployment because I can always work at some point, right? But clearly not being able to work in my dental hygiene practice, that's a lot of income that I'm not making. Even I'm tutoring, but obviously that big source of income has now been lost. So I have been um, looking into all of the different um, insurance packages that I have. Um, just in case you're curious, I've had um, disability insurance probably since I was a dental assistant. So it's been about 15 years now. So I have that. Um, I have a clinical insurance for my um, office here, for my home office, because patients come to my home. So if anything ever happens to my home office, happens to my equipment, happens to a patient, knock on wood, um, I have coverage for that. I do also have um, coverage with the CDHO and the OD, or sorry, the CDHO and the CDHA. I do pay more to have the extra coverage. Um, but those are more for if a patient um, complains about, you know, something, right? Or it, it does have a lot of it involved, but I'm just sort of giving you guys like in a nutshell. Um, plus, I also have insurance because I go to patients' homes to clean their teeth. So what I want um, you guys to look up is there's something called office interruption insurance. That means that if your office is shut down or you can't work in your office for a reason, you might have some coverage for that. But the kicker is it depends if you had signed up for if the office is shut down due to the coronavirus, due to this pandemic that's happening. So if you don't have that specific insurance or if it happened to due to a pandemic, then you might not be covered, but it's something you want to ask about. If you don't ask, the, um, the company won't pay you, okay? Um, insurance companies love to, um, for you to not ask, to not apply, to not do anything ask them, it can't hurt. So good luck, you guys. Let me know, that's what I plan to be doing. Um, but there's also something being offered by the government that's available April 6th, I believe. Again, this is for Canada, um, where a small business owner, you can get up to $2,000 a month um, while you're not working. But there's also another thing where they will give you um, $40,000 for a loan. Um, interest free to my understanding, but don't quote me on that. I have to look into it further and $10,000 of that, they say you might not have to pay back. So even if for some reason you don't qualify for that $2,000 a month um, payment, you might qualify for that loan portion. So what you could do is put that money in your account and just leave it there and then obviously pay it all back but you could have that $10,000 because they're not, they may not um, want you, need you to pay that back. So it's kind of like they're giving you $10,000. You know, again, you guys, please, I'm not an expert. This is just me as if I'm talking to somebody who just came to my house and we're just kind of talking about insurance and things that we might be able to get. So please, I am not an expert. Ask your accountant, but these are definitely things that I'm looking into because every little bit would help right now. So I thought if I'm having these questions, there's probably other independent dental hygienists out there like me who are wondering the same thing that don't qualify for unemployment insurance or just you know other things that they might not qualify. So let me know you guys if you have questions, but I'm not an expert, so it's probably better to ask your accountant. 
that's what I plan to do. Um, I plan to talk to them come April time. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.